Vickers, also miserable, and much more to my delight. Chat. Let's talk about Matthew Vickers for just a second. If you don't know, Matthew Vickers is the father of Faith Vickers, also known, predominantly known, as Ethan Ralph's first baby mama. Many moons ago, Ethan Ralph solicited a fresh out of high school um, 18 year old girl to travel across the entire country from uh, from Northern California to Virginia so that he may fuck her because as it turns out her father and Ethan Ralph are literally doppelgangers in terms of personality, stress management, vices, um, anger, ineptitude, literally every category you could possibly think fatness. They're basically exactly alike. So this young girl who has a daddy issue decides um, she's going to get away from her real daddy and find her new daddy. And her new daddy was Ethan Ralph. And the time that they spent together, um, which was only a couple months, uh, Faith Vickers was r ritualistically humiliated because she had done meth and her teeth were all fucked up. And every time Ralph was mad at her, he would film her in her mouth, meth mouth and put that on the internet. Eventually, she had a mental breakdown. She went to a uh, mental hospital. And it turned out that she was pregnant. She had been impregnated by the pig and would give birth to a demon baby. This came after Matthew Vickers registered to the Kiwi Farms to talk about how he was going to deal with Ethan Ralph. This revelation was so shocking to all of us. We could not, we literally could not believe that this was happening. That the father of the of the 18-year-old that had flown across the country to get pigged uh, was actually on the Kiwi Farms talking to us. And I think most people were very passive with him, and they just wanted more content. However, I was a little bit concerned with his technique. Um, one of the first things that he did was uh, cancel her cell phone contract that he was paying for. So generally speaking, I would imagine that if your daughter has ran away and you're upset that she's done that, literally the last thing you would possibly want to go for in terms of punitive um, reaction would be to turn off her cell phone because then how can she call if you want her to come back how can she call you to, to get back to you if, if you've turned off the phone because if she's in an abusive situation she doesn't have many options where she could talk to somebody it's not like she can walk to a pay phone if she's being monitored like there's a reason why they put those are you being sex trafficked things like in bathrooms because guess what that's where people are going to have a time a minute alone you know and if uh, you don't have a cell phone, then you can't make use of that time. So first thing he did was they like, take away her phone, which doesn't make any sense. And he threatened her. He said, there will be more, more punitive measures taken unless you come home right now, young lady. And it was immediately obvious to everybody with a fucking brain cell that this is exactly what she was trying to get away from. That he was an overbearing, incompetent fucktard. And um, she... Wanted, number one, to establish her own independence because she was an adult woman at that point. And she also wanted uh, to piss him off by going for the ugliest, grossest, pig fuck monster on the entire planet uh, as, a, as a new daddy, which she accomplished. Then, um, at some point, me telling him this, me telling him, you're really fucking up. I can tell you right now that you're making mistakes, that this is not going to work in your favor, that you're driving her away further. Uh, his response to that was to abandon the Kiwi Farms. He got upset that me, a childless 20-something-year-old upstart, was telling him, a 50-year-old man with a bunch of children, that his parenting techniques were not ideal or less than perfect. So what he did instead was he opened up... Um, I know, I'm telling you. I will tell you the story over and over again because it's very, very funny to me. He started up a podcast called The Good, The Bad, and The Vicious, and he really thought that he was going to start up a competitive podcast to Ethan Ralph and it failed hideously he enlisted some of the gayest fucking people that have ever like orbited Ralph to be like his his consorts like like um Keno Shea sticks out because he's still fucking retarded and then there are other losers that were like orbiting Vickers for for information for for like info drops and he ended up caring for the pig's demon child and now, after <laughs> after months and months of this, trying to get back at Ethan Ralph, who at this point had remarried, had another demon child, and has fled the country, trying to litigate him for money he doesn't have, he's bankrupt. 
he's not only bankrupt, he's fucked. Uh, and that brings us to the, the current situation. He has divorced his wife and he has filed for bankruptcy, um, which he has done three times in the past. He's attempted to file for bankruptcy several times because, as it turns out, Vickers is a retard. He's been arrested for violent crimes related to um, business disputes in the past. He's had many failed businesses, and then he's also a retard when it comes to debt. He has over $300,000 unsecured consumer debt, which means credit cards. And the reason why um, is that he, he does stupid shit like sending people $2,000 worth of PS5s for to own Ralph. He literally bought PS5s for like three gay logs and himself so that they could play Tekken together on the good, the bad, and the vicious because Ethan, Ralph, and Medicare were having a Tekken fight. So they all bought um, $2,000 worth of equipment and then the four copies of the game to play this game. Then other things happen. Fast forward. They're foreclosing his house. His coin shop has gone... Um, Online only. He's like moving all the wares out of his coin shop and closing the actual physical location. And my first thought when I read this was how are they taking his house? Because if you don't know, in the United States, when you go bankrupt, they can take basically anything except your primary residence, things you need inside your house, and your primary vehicle. Like that's it. That's how that's how they make sure that bankruptcy doesn't like ruin somebody's entire life. That you can't be homeless because of a bankruptcy. So how are they taking his house? Matthew Vickers had moved into like an up like a yuppie area that had a homeowners association. And part of the homeowners association agreement, because the agreement, the property has a homeowners association license like attached to it. And whenever you buy the house, you must also agree to the homeowners association contract. His homeowners association contract was specifically designed to keep out poor people, which means that when you sign that contract, you explicitly, explicitly state that your house is not protected from bankruptcy, which I have never heard of. I didn't even know that you could contractually agree to lose um, important protections on your assets when you buy something. I didn't know that was a thing, but apparently it was a thing. I've never heard of that. But Matthew Vickers somehow wandered into that, despite being someone who's a serial debtor, who's had business issues in the past. He felt confident buying a house that um, was not protected from bankruptcy by its homeowner's agreement. Either he didn't read it or didn't think that he would ever be bankrupt. But he's been filing for Chapter 7 over and over again, or for Chapter 13 over and over again for years. Which is a common white trash tactic to avoid paying your debt. Because when you file for, for bankruptcy, there's a stay on your payments. They can't, basically, when you say that you're going to go bankrupt, all of your debt collection is frozen. You say, look, look, time out, time out. I'm having issues here. I need the court to help me solve my debt. And um, that's different from chapter, I think chapter seven, where it's like, okay, now we're going to sell everything and wipe the debt clean. Chapter 13 is like, I need help. I need this restructured, but he was not granted um, his bankruptcy three times, which means that what he was doing was asking for help from the court to stay his payments and then not following through with the court program. So they would continue again in the future, which is a really, 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 really dumb idea because you're not delaying your payments. You're actually incurring more debt because when you file for a bankruptcy, the debtor's attorney's fees are added to your debt even if they don't grant the bankruptcy. So every time he did this, he actually got thousands more in debt because they would give him, um, they would put on their fees for fighting the bankruptcy or dealing with the bankruptcy that he didn't intend to go through directly into his consumer debt. Um, and then he's getting divorced. And now there is some argument about if what he's doing is trying to... Um, uh, like uh, evade some sort of financial agreement or something. He's wiped everything clean. He's disappeared from the internet like Keffels. And uh, there's a, a thought, if, did he really get divorced because his wife sees him as a fucking retard loser? But he had said in the past that his um, wife permitted him to spend as much money as, the, as he wanted. Literally, he said this, that his wife had permitted him to spend whatever he wanted to go after Ethan Ralph. Which, by the way, um, he's had legal representation, has been filing 
um, shit for years at this point, which is tens of thousands of dollars. So a lot of that debt is just to his uh, attorneys. And then, by the way, at some point, he began filing pro se. So he knew he was going bankrupt at some point and start, stopped paying for attorneys and started trying to do his shit himself. Um, so, yeah, it's just a fucking mess. It's unbelievable. Ethan Ralph has uh, Thanos snapped your entire life. And there he is, the, my, my boy. His wife, daughter, family, business, house, reputation, hair, teeth, insulin sensitivity, because he's diabetic. YouTube, Twitter, smile, and optimism, gone. But at least he still has the demon child to take care of. Here's an example of a great post made by him uh, at the peak of the Faith Thicker's drama saying, Do you consider, maybe, just maybe, that there's some shit I know about the situation that no one here has a clue about? Or do you assume that Kiwi Farms has 100% of the information? Calm down, man. You have literally no horse in this race. If I'm really as stupid as some people seem to think I am, then you're going to have to get, then you'll all have a big laugh at my expense. I am having a big laugh literally at his expense. Like in the literal financial definition of that term. <laughs> I find this very funny. Because it could have been avoided. All of this could have been avoided. But nobody listens to me, Chad. I'm retarded. Um, cool. Very cool, Vickers. Thank you. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.